Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my other show, Pearls of Wisdom. And we're going to be doing some more trade talk like we've been doing for a while now. Oh, we, we're at the deadline here, and, and uh, we, we're going to be talking about Lindholm, the big name left out there right now, I believe. We did Chickering, we did Miller, we did uh, Sherratt before he got traded. And Florida was one of the teams we had on there. Um, we have did Petrie, who still could be out there, going somewhere as well. We have did all the big names. Chickering, who I don't think now is going to get traded at the deadline, we did. And now we're going to do Lindholm. And normally we do five uh, teams, but I think... Everybody in the land is going to be going after Lindholm. Now, we're going to look at why Lindholm is available, if he's available, uh, how much he may bring, and we're going to look at an article that talks about the availability of Lindholm, which seems very likely that he's going to be moved. That's Hampus Lindholm, left-hand defenseman for the Anaheim Ducks. Um and uh, we're gonna look at we're gonna look at that article, but let me tell you that he is a fantastic defenseman, who I'm I really think it's a good idea that they're trading him, but I also think that he's gonna bring a pretty big package back. So we're gonna look at six teams. You're gonna sub up because you're gonna want to know this content. At, after the trade deadline, it doesn't stop. We we're gonna be looking at uh, teams that could trade their first round pick in the off season, off season trades that may happen. I love the trade stuff, don't you know? And uh, then we're, of course, I'm gonna be doing playoff predictions and all that stuff. So get yourself all subbed up. Also, you can watch the NHL Pearl of Wisdom show, which I do uh, quite, often day, quite often during the day. I also do live streams, all kinds of stuff, and you can be part of the frolic. Also do picks. Everything, everything hockey you'll find on this channel, and I'm sure you'll really, really enjoy it. I'd love to have you. Okay, this could sit down, get your popcorn, because this could take a little bit, all right? But it's going to be well worth it. I promise. There we go. This is the article, and uh, this comes from the hockey writers. Uh, hockey writer, uh, the hockey writers. I like that publication. They do pretty well. They they really they get the insider stuff. And uh, ducks holding out Lindholm, and that was the game tonight. It is the 18th today. Uh, they did hold out Lindholm. He's not playing. <clears throat> and when teams do that, it generally means they are on the way. They are moving on. Uh, they don't want them to get injured and screw up the trade and all that kind of stuff like that. So TSN Drager reports this. Um, and they, he also reports that the ass that they're looking for is a first, a third, and a top prospect. Like some spinoff from the Sherratt trade to Florida. So we're going to look at the Sherratt trade. We're going to look at uh, what Florida got in that trade. And then we're going to apply it to the six or seven teams that I believe will be in on Lindholm here at the deadline. Uh, there was no part. LeBron says there is no contract talk, uh, contract talks as of yesterday. So it just wasn't working out. St. Louis would make sense, and St. Louis is one of the teams we'll be looking at, but is the price too high? Well, let's ask the question, is the price too high? Um, first of all, we're going to be looking at Ben Chirot. Now, there's a difference in uh, Ben Chirot and not, but first we'll look at what Ben Chirot got. They got, Panthers got uh, Smilinich. A 2023 first round pick. That's very important. 2023 is supposed to be, is considered one of the deepest drafts we've seen since like 2015. It's that 2023 pick is first round pick is gold. Uh, in 
Chicago just got that and more for Hegel, yeah, which was a huge haul. This that this is huge getting this 2023 pick. Now Smilinich, we'll look at him right here. He was a third overall pick in 2020, and honestly, he's about an average prospect at best. Uh, he hasn't actually progressed very well over last year where he had 21 points in 29 games. His points per game is actually lower. And it's plus minus, but I mean, I don't know how well, how good the team is. Plus minus really doesn't tell you all that much. Maybe a little bit, but he's not putting up as many points. And from all I've heard, his progression seems to have stalled a little bit. Doesn't mean he's not going to be an NHLer. Probably going to be a third, fourth line at his top end, though, if he makes it at all. But it's the 2023 first. And they also got, in that deal, a 2022 fourth round pick. So some variation of this is what we're going to be looking at when we look at each one. Now, Jamie, now Ben... You're going to have a huge argument here, really, with a lot of people about Ben. This is this is Ben Sherratt. Um, his analytics are not that great. Let's put it this way. Defensively, he's not great. Offensively, he's actually better offensively than he is defensively, and he's not that very – he's not very good – offensively analytics wise i'm not bringing up the analytics a lot of you aren't analytics people every what does everybody love about charat though he brings the pain he hits people he moves people out in front from in front of the net all of those sort of things like that and you say well isn't that defense yeah but so is moving the puck and stripping the puck off of people's sticks and playing players one-on-one -on -one. all of these things charat's not all that great at but he will block shots, He's and he will bring pain. Now, in the playoffs, bringing pain and being physical is much more valuable than in the regular season. Ben Chirot's value is as a play in the playoffs much more than it is in the regular season. Now, Lindholm, on the other hand, this is Hampus Lindholm, his analytics are pretty darn good. They slipped a little bit in Anaheim, but at one time he was like an analytics darling. Uh, he's not that small of a boy, 6'3", and he doesn't back down from people, but he's not aggressive like Sherrod is. But he's great at moving the puck out. He's good at stripping pucks. He's great one-on-one. -on -one. Personally, I like him better. I would have him over Sherrod myself. Um, but... Their ask was somewhere in the Sherratt area. He's also, just like Sherratt, going to be a free agent, and that's going to play some value here. There's one more thing we want to look at here. His remaining daily cap hit is a million dollars, just over a million dollars. That is what the cap hit for another team is going to be. So, yes, his accumulated daily cap hit is four million, but that is basically been paid out by the Anaheim Ducks already and still sits on their cap when they get traded when he gets traded it'll only be a million on the other on the other team's cap which help, helps them out quite a bit all right let's look at the seven teams that i think he may get traded to or could get traded to or at least would be very interested and the first one i'm going to look at is my Edmonton Oilers. And please, please, please let it be, even though I know it's not going to happen. And the reason why I know it's going to happen is because the the uh, ask was a first, a third, and a, a prospect. Now, the first round pick, like I said, for Florida was in, the, in, in 2023. I believe that if the team was offering a first-round draft pick in 2022. The prospect's going to have to be better than Similic that Montreal got for uh, Florida from Florida. Okay, but here's the thing: 
Kenny Holland and his infinite wisdom will not give a first round pick for a rental. Lindholm would probably be a rental. I I don't think they would be able to sign him long term. I, I, I have a feeling when Lindholm if Lindholm goes on the open market, he's gonna get somewhere in the six to seven million dollars mark range. He's twenty eight years old, probably till he's about thirty five. Uh, Edmonton, as you should maybe do or do not know, has been historically capped right out, and that doesn't change here. They have $7 million in cap space next year, and they got to get a goaltender, because they're not, or sign Koskinen for a lot less. Uh, they have to sign, maybe, you know, maybe they let Evander Kane go. They got Jesse Puglia Harvey coming up as an RFA. Yamamoto coming up as a RFA. I don't think they'd be able to take him. So it would actually be a rental. Now, it would be a rental that I would love, 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 love. They could give their 2022 or 23 first round pick, which they have. Then they could, and by the way, if you're new to this channel, sub yourself up. And tell me in the comment section what you think of these trades. What do you think that about Holland not giving up his first for a rental? All of those sort of things like that. Sub yourself up to the channel, boys and girls. Okay. Uh, so just for poops and giggles, just to say what a first round pick. We'll say the 2022 first round pick. I think they're going to have to give a solid prospect in return like Marcus Niemelainen who's fared fairly well in the NHL so far. If they give the 2023, they might get away with some, uh, maybe Sam or um, uh, you know, Jake Chase on and a third round pick in 2023. They might be able to get away with something like that. Tyler Benson. Possibly, if it's a 2023, maybe you can get away with Tyler Benson. But if it's the 2022, I think it's going to take somebody fairly significantly. Significant. Significantly? It's going to take somebody fairly significantly. Uh, like, a, uh, you know, maybe Carter Savoy, who's ripping it up in college right now. If it's a 2022. I don't think Edmonton's going to do it. But look at where what they would have. You could put, because he would knock Duncan Keith right out of there. You'd have a legitimate top four defenseman to play with Evan Bouchard, who's fairly physical. He's He would instantly almost become their best defenseman. Arguably, maybe Darnell Nurse. I mean, arguably. Because he is really, really, really good. And if we could get him signed up, honestly... I might even trade off Jesse Pugliarvi. To, to if I can get a Larson signed up for seven years, I might even trade off Jesse Pugliarvi for whatever I could get him for. Honestly, it's, it's, it'd be that huge to have him on our defense. But I know Kenny Holland's not going to do it. It's a pipe dream. It's not going to happen. And yes, I know we that Edmonton Oilers would still have to sign a goaltender and all that. Anyways... Sub yourself up and tell me what you think about that, Edmonton Oilers fans. Next, Boston Bruins. And if you talk to Boston Bruins fans, a lot of them, a lot of them will say that center position is not what they're worried about. What they're worried about is defense. So the first thing, of course, we got to look at is cap space. And we saw that the projected cap space all, uh, now paid out after it's been paid out for Lindholm is a million seven. And if you're a Boston Bruins fan, if you're a fan of hockey, sub yourself up. We're going to talk about this type of stuff all through the to the playoffs in the regular season. We're going to be doing free agency. You're going to love it. Sub yourself up. So they pretty much have enough space to take him on right off the get-go. They might have to give something up. 
Now, the big thing here, people are going to say DeBrusque. I don't think DeBrusque is going anywhere till the summer. They need to go for a cup. I don't think if they're going to do this deal, Boston is not, I don't believe, going to give up anything off their roster. So the ask was a first, a third, and a prospect. Now, as we know, it's a difference between whether it's a 2022 first, the 2023 first is significantly more valuable. It's actually, it's very, it's kind of hard to wrestle from, uh, from uh, teams, the 2023 first. So I know there's going to be Boston fans out there that are like, I don't want to do any of this. I want to keep our kids and just grow that way. That's fine, I guess, whatever. But if you're going to do that, do you also want to rebuild and trade off Bergeron and all that? Tell me that in the comment section. Because if you don't do this, you might as well do that. You're not the Boston's not a contender without a better defense. So there's no use swimming around in non-contender land. Just rebuild. So that's what I believe. Anyways, tell me if you disagree with me. But we'll look at the depth chart and see what he would do for them. Uh, okay, so he's a left defenseman. It's going to knock somebody out here. Maybe Mike Riley become the seventh defenseman. Derek Forbert probably become the seventh defenseman. But you've got a smoking left defenseman to play with McAvoy. Now all of a sudden you got an amazing top two. Amazing. Uh, the other problem here again is that uh, – Boston probably would not be able to resign him. We'll take a look at that in a second. But they got an awesome top two. So what are you going to give? If, if it's a 2002 first-round pick, which is less valuable than the 2023, and look at – go back into the beginning of this video to see what the value probably is. Uh, you're probably looking at Euro Vakaninen, your first – and possibly a fourth-round pick. It's comparative to the Sherrod deal, if it's the 2022. If it's the 2023, you might be able to get away with Jakob Zaboril if he ever is not injured again. Zach Zanishin, possibly. Uh, some, you know, uh, John Beecher, I, I think you're pretty high on John Beecher, but like a middle... Prospect. That's what Similich, Similich is. A middle prospect for the if the if it's a 2023 first round pack pick, you would probably get away with that. Now let's look at the possibility of re-signing them. Could Boston give it a shot? Re-sign them. Uh Bergeron, it would it really would depend on how much Bergeron sides for if he takes a bit of a pay cut. Um do you you know, let uh, Jake DeBrus gets traded, depending on what they get back from him, for him, how much space are they going to have? $13 million. I think they could do it. I think they could actually do it, but it's going to be like probably about five and a half to six million, maybe even a little more for, for Lindholm and probably for about seven years. So it's all going to depend on what you want to do. Do you want to do a rebuild? Do you want to continue being competitive? Do you want to see if you can build a cup contender one more time with the likes of Marshawn and Patrice Bergeron if he keeps on going? Which way do you want to go? If you don't, if you if you're not looking at getting, if you're only thinking about getting younger and trying to, then you're rebuilding. I believe what you should do, what it, what a team should do, is trade people off and do it. No sitting in between. No sitting in the middle. That's what I say. Sub yourself up, Boston fans. Tell me what you think. Next, St. Louis Blues. And, uh, I, well, there was talk that the St. Louis Blues were in on Sherratt. And now you've got uh, Lindholm out there. And I think he's better than Sherratt. You may disagree with me, but I think he's better than Sherratt. And I think St. Louis would definitely be on the phone here. Um, they cap space wise, they'd have to do some work, but 
it's only about a million dollars. It's only about a million dollars. They could work out a they could give a player like Scandella back or something like that. That would easily do it. Um they wouldn't really I don't think they'd want to do that. They'd want to keep Scan there in case there's injuries. But a player can Mackenzie McKeckern or you know, something like that to even out even it out. And as we were saying, what they're asking for is a first, a third, and a good prospect. And it depends on 2022 or 2023 first. 2023 first is far more valuable. It's gold. It's going to be a deep draft. So if you give the 2022, I'm thinking that a really good prospect is going to have to go. This is going off of the... Ben Sherratt trade and what they got there. Similich, the prospect that, that that Montreal got back is average at best, but it was a 2023 first. So they could do it. Now, can they re-sign him? You got David Perron to re-sign. He'll probably, I don't know what he'll sign for. How much does he want to stay in St. Louis? Maybe not much more. Uh, Yvonne Barbashev's going to probably going to have a uh, uh, McEachern. Sorry. Uh, you might get a little bit of a raise, but nothing too bad. And how's their cap space? Ooh, seven million eight. I don't think they're going to be able to resign him. I think this will be a straight rental. And I think probably in Florida, it's a straight rental too. Also for anybody else that's listening, if you do, they may do a deal where if they say, if you do resign them, You'll even add a little more into it. It's possible. It does happen. Let's see how we would work out in St. Louis, though. St. Louis is stacked offensively, right? They've got a deep lineup. Brown, Barbershop, Buknevich is playing on their third line. And Sunquist is a fourth line center on this court in this group, man. Sunquist is a beast. I love that guy. But they could use a little upgrade on the defense. I've heard lots. I talk on the St. Louis boards all the time. They don't like the DeMarco Scandella all that much. Let's tell you that right now. So you would have now Ekman, uh, Lindholm here on the left D spot. Or you could put you could put Krug. I think Krug and Falk have been playing together and they seem to have a connection. I think it would be Lindholm and Pareko. And let me tell you, let me tell you something right now. That is one hell of a shutdown defensive pair. Crazy good. And Lindholm can bring the pain a little bit. That would upgrade their defense if you take Marcus Scandella out of there. Immensely huge. Lindholm is killer at moving the puck out of the zone. He's killer at it. He, he blocks shots. He uh, doesn't have to block shots so much because he doesn't spend that much time in the defensive zone because he's moving the puck out. Um, he can play on your power play. He can do a lot of things. He, he, he's just an overall very good defenseman. So, yeah, you'd have to give up either a first in 2002 or 2023. I think if you do the 2022 – yeah, I don't know. I I don't think you, there's a prospect that St. Louis has. It's going to have to be like neighbors or something like that. If you do the 2022, I think. And I know you don't want to do that. I don't want to do that if I'm you, if you either. So I'd probably give up the 2023. And then you could get like Tyson Galloway or something like that your first and a third round pick. St. Louis is going for it this year. If you're going for it this year, man, I don't know if you're going to be able to do with that St. Louis, with that defense. If you're a St. Louis fan, sub yourself up to my channel right now. Do it right now. You'd be part of this great trade for all, for eternity. Imagine that. And uh, you can comment in the comment section there. Tell me, you think St. Louis should go for it now? Why not? Why? Why not? Should they or should they not? Should they keep their first in 2023 and just keep on doing what they normally do and just keep on recycling young talent? 
but you know, have a difficult time getting over the top. They did one time though. They did it once. It's worked once. It could work again. They may not even have to do this. Tell me what you think. All right. Carolina hurricane. That's you heard that. Now there's a big thing with this Carolina hurricane one. That I got to tell you about. I'm going to tell you something right now. They don't like rentals at all. Carolina will basically not do it if he's going to become a rental. The only way this is going to happen is if they can re-sign him. And it's possible. They'd be happy to re-sign him if he's willing to. And they have the space, which I'm about to find out right now. Yeah, they got $24 million. I mean, lots of people to sign, though. Niederreiter is going to be gone. They're going to let him go. Trocheck, I'm not sure about. There's going to be a lot of change in Carolina next year. I would imagine. They have a strict how much they're going to pay policy there for for each position and guy. And if you don't fit in there, out of here. So they may not get Cole. I think they could resign him here. And I'll tell you, if you had Slavin, he, he's better than Shea. He's better than Brady Shea. Slavin, Larson, at home, I mean. At home. Lindholm, Hampus Lindholm. And Slavin, Lindholm, and uh, Pesci. My gosh, man. You would have one amazing defense here. Amazing. And you still got... D'Angelo injured. Lindholm and D'Angelo would be absolutely mwah, mwah, this fine defensive defenseman. Uh, it would be absolutely incredible. I, I would do it in a heartbeat. They could sign him again. I think they would do it if they could sign it. Now, they don't have their first. It's going to have to be the 2023 first. What Anaheim is looking for is a first, a prospect, and a third round pick, same as what Sherrod got. So they'd have to trade their 2023 first. That's going to hurt. That is going to hurt if they do that. They might be able to get away with their second in 2022, but you're going to have to give up a darn good prospect to go with that. I mean, I'm sure they'll listen. Sorry, let's look at the depth chart for... Uh, yes, you would have to give up probably that Nikishin kid. Yeah, uh, Nikishin. And this kid is, like, killing it over at the, in the KHL right now. Absolutely killing it. Hard to give up. He's also 20 years old. He's pretty much ready to go, right, soon. He's going to be ready to go. 12 points in 46 games in the KHL for a 20-year-old is fantastic. From all I've heard, he's going to be a player pretty much for sure. But if you can get Lindholm and be a contender now, which they're trying to do, you give that 2000, you give a second in 2023, say, which is still pretty valuable. And a guy like, if they like Nikishin as much as I like Nikishin, and a third round pick, maybe you can get away with that. Or Noel Gundler, who is uh, just an amazing shot. He has an amazing shot. How's he doing in the money? Uh, 23 points in 50 games as a 20 year old, damn good prospect. It's going to be a prospect of that level. That's all I'm going to, that's all I, I, uh, I got. It's for sure going to be a prospect at that level if it's going to be your second in 2022 or 23, actually. It, it's going to be a damn good prospect. Jack Drury, maybe. Maybe they might like him like that, but it's going to be an upper echelon. If it's going to be the, um, 
First in 2023, you might be able to get away with Orion Suzuki as the prospect. He's kind of struggling in the minors right now. He's kind of iffy. A B-level prospect and a fourth-round pick. So, Carolina fans, tell me what you think about that. Uh, also, sub yourself up so you can be fine of this, this part of this great content on a regular basis. Okay. Next, Nashville. Nashville just might be into this. Um, they're trying to sign Forsberg right now. Basically, Nashville is completely dependent on if they choose to sign Forsberg or not. If they do choose to sign Forsberg, and I do believe that's choose, because they really do have the cap space to sign Forsberg, a lot of times what teams will do is they'll try to make it look like money was the reason, but in all truth, they could be just thinking about rebuild here in Nashville because they're one of those teams that are just good enough to make it in, but not good enough to get good draft picks. And that's never where you want to be. However, if they do take Forsberg and they want to get better and they think they can race with the big boys and all of that and do that, you could take Lynn home here and I believe they could actually sign him, and I also believe it would give them one spanking good defense. Now, he's a left defenseman, so it's going to be a little bit difficult because you already got Roman Josie at home, but, and then you have Lindholm. He's just got an amazing top six. I mean, if you're going to be a capped, a, a team that can't really play to the cap too much, uh, be a team like Nashville that basically – it's a by committee type team where you have strength all through your four lines rather than superstars. So you can have a deep lineup. Having a insanely strong defense would go a long way to make it possible for a team like this to be able to do something in the playoffs, I think. And getting Lindholm would certainly do that for them if they could sign him up. If they could talk to his agent and say, look, we'll give you what, what's uh, – Ekholm is going to get $6 million next year, so somewhere around there. So we'll give you Ekholm money for the next seven years, and they can have, like, just an absolutely sick defense. Josie Fabro, Ekholm, Carrier has been just getting better and better and better. And then they work on Philip Myers and get him better and play him with Lindholm or something like that. That would be an amazing top six defense. Over, un, completely would continuously be underrated and would be one of the best in the league. So what do you think, Nashville fans? Think they should do something like that? Sub yourself up and tell me about it in the comment section. All right, we got one more team. And this one is going to be a little bit on the cray cray side, but I think it might be the one team that just may do it because they do things like this all the time, and that's the Dallas Stars. Now, why would I would say that the Dallas Stars are going to do something like this? Because the Dallas Stars keep on believing that they are a contender when I don't think they are, but it doesn't matter what I think. It only matters what they think. And if they are going to keep on going for it, going for it, going for it, which they seem to always do with picking up guys like Ryan Suter and Andre Sekarash and re-signing Joe Pavelski's and, you know, these old guys that just are going to keep on going for it. And uh, cap space-wise, they don't have any, so they're going to have to work out some retainment or whatever and you know there's lots of things you can do it's only for a million just over a million there's lots of things you could do to get that now next year they got 17 million coming off the books and Klingberg ain't coming back so it's very possible that they could sign Lindholm now he's a left defenseman which makes it a little difficult but for this year, if they really believe they can do something this year, I could see them doing something like this. They have their first-round pick in 2022. 
and they have their first round pick in 2023. Not that you would have to give both of them up. If you're a Dallas fan, sub yourself up to the channel here. Tell me what you think about it. I'm going to do content like this a lot. I do it all the time. I just did a whole bunch of, I did pretty much every trade guy that there could be out there right now. Price, Miller, everything, all these videos doing it. You, you can go check it out. Okay. So if, if it's a 2022, you're going to have to give up a better prospect. And now the question is, does Dallas have that prospect? First of all, let's see. He's going to fit where Thomas Harley is. Thomas Harley is a little young to be playing Lindholm type minutes. And then when Miro Heiskanen comes back, you've got Lindholm and Heiskanen next year. That is a beautiful combination. A beautiful shutdown line you have right there. And then Thomas Harley uh, can can work his way up the line up there in the more in the sixth uh, six spot. And then Hawk and Paw in the seven. And you've got a beautiful defense core next year if they can get him signed up. Um, if not, right now, Linholm and Klingberg is a fine second pairing. So what would they give up for prospects? If it's a 2022, which is less valuable, it's basically going to, I mean, they, they're not really swimming in prospects. Maverick Bork, probably. How's he doing in junior this year, Maverick Bork? 43 points in 21 games. That's in the QMHL. Uh, offense was never his problem. It's his two-way game. But they're going to have to give something significant if it's the 2002 because they don't really have a lot of prospects that are knocking on, you know, knocking on the door to come in. Uh, they might even have to look at I think it's going to cost them the 2023 first. Simple as that. And then like Ty DeLandria, uh, who looks like he's going to be a bottom six guy, much like Simulich if he happens to make it. Um, and a third round pick, but you get Lindholm, you have a chance at a cup this year, I suppose. I don't think it's a good idea. Do you think it's a good idea? Dallas fans sub yourself up and tell me all about it in the comment section. I'll talk back at you. I'll talk back at you for sure. No doubt about it. All right. That's my full 42. I went long, but what are you going to do? There was a lot to talk about. There was a lot of teams on this one. So all part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Sub yourself up. Get over to my channel. There's lots of frolic in the land. And have a great day, everybody. Okay, bye.